Well, hey there, and welcome to an Ignite Press book launch livecast. Um, today, I've got a really terrific guy and a great author, Jim Vasilopoulos, is here, and he's going to walk us through his new book. And before we here it is, guess what we do is we help people get their message out to the world through books, uh, the most timeless uh, medium available and such a powerful tool and if you ever want to talk about your book just reach out to us at ignitepress.us ignitepress.us so jim vasilopoulos uh, has created a beautiful book called clarity business wisdom to work less and achieve more and we've got him in the house with us right now jim how are you today Doing great. It uh, feels good to kind of, uh, you know, finally be across the finish line with this thing. Well, and you've been working on this book for a long time. You were working on it a long time before we met, I believe. Yeah. Um, when did this journey start? You know, I, I kind of always knew I wanted to write a book. That was a long time ago. And, um, you know, I, I probably thought about which book I wanted to write longer than actually writing the book. Um, you know, what was the message I wanted to put out there? And I had a lot of people encourage me to write books on sales or something like that. But, you know, what I really work with people on is bigger and broader than that. And so um, I, you know, kind of really thought about like, how do I really want to talk about what I do? And, and with conversations with clients and friends and people that were, you know, uh, influencers and in how I think um, originally I started wanting to write a book on wisdom, but then really it came to what is the the value of wisdom, which is clarity. And um, that's when this topic came to mind. And then it was like, okay, if pe my cl clients were telling me they value clarity is what they get from interacting with me, um, I'm going to talk about how I help people achieve that clarity. And I kind of had to break it down and really think very intentionally about what I do when I work with people. And that was um, really good for me. I mean, I got everything I needed to get out of the book just by thinking about the topic and writing the book, um, anything that happens after this is gravy. Well, um, thank you. And I want to uh, let people know here that if you are watching on Facebook or YouTube, LinkedIn, um, go ahead and put your comments in the chat. Use that chat role uh, to say, hi, hello, uh, let us know if you got the book. And if you have a question for Jim, go ahead and pass that along too. And we'll try to work that into our live cast as we proceed. Now, Jim, you're talking about working with your clients and providing them clarity. Let's let's give some clarity. What do you, what do you do? Would tell us more about your background and what you do for your clients. Yeah, well, now most of what I do is um, business advising. Um, I work with you know all kinds of different firms, whether they're startups all the way through you know Fortune 50 companies and their executive teams. And I, I like working with people to try and you know um, see the forest through the trees and try and see that which matters most. Um, there's so much going on in our lives and you know we've got more information technology than we've ever had before. So there's so much that can distract us and you know it's really a discipline you have to figure out to say like, what is it that matters? Where should we focus our attention and our time and the scarce resources that we have? And that's what I do as a business advisor. And, and in many ways, people consider me an executive coach. Um, and uh, so business advisor, executive coach, that's what I do. And one of the reasons why I do that is because um, that's a path I've already been down, starting businesses, selling businesses, and I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, I've learned from them and I've had you know, a respectable amount of success with what I've done. So now I wanna bring that forward and help people with their journey because um, I so enjoyed my journey. So um, we've got some questions coming in here, which is uh, great. Uh, and I'll pass a couple of those on to you uh, in a second. What would you say, you know, what's a common struggle that you see businesses encounter um, that you find you walk in and, you know, nine times out of 10, or maybe just six times out of 10, you see and you go, yeah, that's, that's an issue that I see that all the time. Yeah, there are a couple that show up a lot. Um, you know, one of them is accountability where people just, you know, don't feel like, um, their staff and team is is you know uh, doing what they should be doing and then you know people aren't being held accountable and so sometimes even staff members aren't 
appreciative of the fact that some of their peers aren't being held accountable. So why should they feel this internal drive to be accountable? That's a, a really uh, popular kind of symptom that affects businesses. Uh, but I think the most pervasive one is everyone's too busy. And, you know, people are just struggling with, I don't have enough time in the day and there's too much going on and the world is changing too fast and we're not staffed, you know, appropriately enough. And, and, you know, it's really a deep amount of thinking that goes into why are we too busy? But I think the reason why it's so important is because in business, we're always managing scarce resources. And, you know, the two of the scarcest resources we have are time and money. And where do we allocate our time? Where do we allocate our money to have the most positive effect? And a lot of times we're really sloppy with time at a personal level, at a uh, business, at a corporate level, we're really sloppy with how we allocate our time. And uh, that is an area where it masks other problems because it's not just, you know, time management isn't the answer. It's, you know, why are we asking people to do things that really provide no benefit or why do we have such a tightly wound bureaucracy that forces people to jump through hoops they probably shouldn't be jumping through? So, um, but it's it's symptomatic of those are probably two of the big uh, popular symptomatic problems people are having. Okay, I want to share it with everybody that the book right now, Clarity, is available on Amazon and you can pick it up there in paperback or Kindle. There's actually a special deal running on the Kindle right now where you can get it for 99 cents. Uh, and that's very limited, uh, so get it while it's hot. Uh, the paperback also has been uh, placed on a sale price, a launch price, and you can get either one or uh, or both there. Now, um, I was looking through your content there, and you know, one of the things you've you've got some pretty incredible testimonials that you uh, you have acquired in regards to you and your book, and I. I wanted to read one of them, if you don't mind. Um, so this, uh, and that is, you've got a, a testimonial from Robert Caldini. Uh, and so if anyone, if most people watching this are gonna know Robert Caldini is a number one uh, New York Times bestselling author uh, of influence and persuasion. So I'm just gonna read this for everybody. This is to brag, brag on you, Jim. Jim's book, Clarity, is delightfully refreshing in the way it walks you through the journeys of three fictional characters, each with, different, each with a different business dilemma. This unique format is very powerful and displays how interpersonal relationships and influence are critical skill sets for business success. The format is also very impactful in that it takes complex concepts such as wisdom and clarity and makes them approachable and attainable. Um, so, Robert Caldini, tell us how that came about. Yeah, you know, um, you know, people who know me know I've got the leadership podcast that I do with Jan Rutherford, and we've been doing that for, you know, six, seven years. I think maybe we're in our seventh year. We've had the good fortune through that to meet and speak with a lot of wonderful people. And, you know, um, Bob Cialdini is one of them. And, and, you know, he's just what a great guy. And, and um, so I actually pinged him a couple of times for some advice and uh, just kind of direction on like how I wanted to go with the book as I was writing it. And then, you know, he was kind enough to kind of give me this wonderful review and uh, recommendation. And so, um, but, you know, he's just, he's, he's one of these guys, it's like the godfather of influence and he's like a big deal. Uh, but, um, you know, he's just a normal, good human. And so, uh, you know, it, we just had a wonderful conversation. I so enjoyed that. And uh, I'm just grateful and humbled by his uh, recommendation. Okay. Now, let's talk about the three characters. You set this book up where you've got three characters that you use in the book. What made you go with, what made you go with that format rather than the kind of traditional, like, bam, 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 you know, hit you over the head kind of thing? Yeah, you know, um, I I was never a big reader as a kid, and you know, it was probably a function of being dyslexic and not realizing it until I was an adult. Um, but uh, you know, we know that like people don't like textbooks a whole lot. Uh, people much prefer stories, and um, even though I, I'm a big fan of case studies, and um, you know, there are a number of great professors, uh, James Schrager at University of Chicago, that I've gotten the the pleasure to know about case studies. I think that's a great way to learn business concepts, but I wanted to take it a step further. And so I created what I would call these case stories. And they're these fictional stories that are an amalgam of 
experiences I've had, experiences I've had with clients, and to make them a little more entertaining. Um, one of the books that I like that's a business book is The Five Dysfunctions of Team. And in that book, it's a fictional story that's used to talk about, you know, having a more high performing team. And so I, I really like that format. So I started off and I wrote one fictional story and I thought that story was going to carry through to the whole, through the whole book. And then I was like, well, no, I want to approach this differently. So I created another character. I wrote a third, a second story. And then I, you know, said, okay, I want to articulate this part of the book. And I created a third character and wrote these stories. And, and, um, you know, this isn't really a spoiler, but they do kind of come together. Um, and that is, you know, what I thought made, um, the book distinct, um, different and elegant in a way to see how, um, you know, it's not just about you and your problems. It's about how working with others, you can often solve your problems much more elegantly and efficiently. And I, I wanted to show the, that part of business that has served me so well through the years, which is not just what I did, but what I was able to do when I partnered up with people in good faith, with good intentions and how we all prospered together. And I thought that was another kind of hidden message that comes out in the book that I hope people take away and enjoy. I'm really glad that you chose to adopt that format. It's funny because you mentioned five dysfunctions of a team, like the most clinical kind of boring title ever on a book. And yeah. then when, and then, and then I, I did the audiobook with it. And as a listener, I go, Oh, well, this isn't what I expected at all based upon the title because I didn't, wasn't expecting that story that the business parable approach basically. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, it was very effective there. And I think it's a really great training method um, rather than the, like I said, the hitch over the head kind of, you know, repeatedly hammering kind of thing that is really all too common. Uh, yeah. No one wants another textbook. Yeah. By the way, I want to share this comment with you while we're here. Uh, Carl Cox uh, coming in through YouTube says, congrats, Jim. I'm so excited for you. And I know that this book is going to share your sage wisdom with so many. Just got my copy and can't wait to dive in. Uh, Thank you, so Carl. I just want to bring that up for you. Um, now, um, there's some other I, uh, testimonials I saw. You've got General McChrystal uh, wrote, extremely revel relevant and is precisely focused on a leader's greatest challenge as its ambitious title. Uh, Jim Vasilopoulos' clarity is a common sense primer on the things business leaders face daily. Every story resonated brilliantly. Um, that's that is high praise. Uh, also, in addition, in addition to general, also a New York Times bestselling author. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th that was kind of special for me. And and to to be honest with you, you know, when I first asked him, and I've had the good fortune to speak with him a number of times, and it's been an honor. Um, you know, he was kind of reluctant. He's like, oh, I get these all the time, and you know, I I was expecting kind of a boring business book. And when he wrote back to me, he was like. This isn't what I expected. It was refreshing because it was different. And uh, you know, he said that like, I really enjoyed it. I couldn't put it down. And and for me, that was meaningful, you know, more, more so, more meaningful than the um the actual testimonial um he provided. It's it's just it was like, you know, he had low expectations, <laughs> you know, and I don't blame him. He gets probably <laughs> hammered with this stuff all the time. But, uh, you know, the, the fact that it was able to kind of break through that kind of barrier and, and you know, engage him was uh, made me feel quite proud of, you know, the effort. No, oh, that was excellent. Um, so everybody, as a reminder, the book is available now on Amazon and you can grab it there for 99 cents for the uh, Kindle version. Paperback is also there. Um, and I would say that this book, uh, more than more than many others is really right for using as a gift. Um, I think that it's a very effective tool that you can share with others that, I mean, if you know anybody in business or in, or in, or in an organization, I mean, uh, that uh, this is something I think they really can benefit from. Uh, on, on that topic, Jim, who did you write it for? I mean, who's, who, who'd you really have in mind when you wrote Clarity? You know, I, it, it's a great question. And anyone who's a, a leader, anyone who has responsibility in business, um, I think this is a useful book. Um, you know, I, I 
like using the three different stories because in one story, we've got a character who's an entrepreneur in another story. We've got a person who's, you know, leading sales is a, is a corporate VP of sales. On another story, we've got a person who's kind of general manu- manager of a manufacturing business. And so we've got these different roles. And I think everyone's going to be able to find some way in which this connects with them and what they do. And so anyone who's got any level of responsibility that has a leadership position, desires to have a leadership position, um, will, you know, find value in this book. And, you know, even if all you do is saying like, I'm too busy at work, you're probably going to find value in this book. Now I'm looking, you know, one of your, one of the things you talk about in your book is sequencing. And, um, I, would you mind explaining what you mean by sequencing and expanding on that for us? Yeah, I think there's like, um, sequencing is a really important component. Like, you know, I'm never going to, even when I'm working with my clients, I'm never going to say, I know more than you. I know more than you about your business. That That's really not the case. Um, and most people actually know what they need to do. It's very common for me as I'm working with people to see people doing things in the wrong order. Um, you know, there are things that are important, but they are not important yet. And, you know, understanding the importance of sequencing, how events, you know, might be important precursors to something you might do, um, how timing may suggest that, yeah, that's an important thing to do just a little bit later. Um, and so sequencing is all about understanding the order in which things need to get done to have the maximum impact. And sometimes that's being a little bit patient. Uh, sometimes that's knowing actually what the right time is for this, where you're going to get maximum impact for that particular effort. And so um, sequencing is about how you put that together for, um, you know, the, the easiest success. And, you know, I've told people for years, and sometimes people hate hearing this from me, is like, I'm, I'm a pretty lazy guy. Um, I have had a lot of success, but I'm a pretty lazy guy. I'm always going to figure out the easiest way to accomplish something. And the greatest way to lower the amount of effort necessary to have a positive impact is to understand the, the common elements of sequencing, timing, and patience. When you understand those, you can get a lot more done with a lot less effort. And and so, Jim, is this something that you do with companies that you know with whom you work? Is you go in and you help analyze how they have sequenced things and what timing that they've set for things, and try to smooth those out and organize and prioritize? Yeah, that's a lot of what I end up you know adding value when I work with companies is to say like, hey, that's great. We need to do that. Let's think about doing this first because here's how they connect and here's how they play together. Or that's great. I know you're eager to do this, um, but if we're a little bit patient, we're going to get more benefit doing it then because that's, you know, and I, I'll be able to articulate the benefits. And, and that's, you know, that's hard to see when you're, in, when you're the one in the middle of it all. Yeah, well, and I imagine you're also get, you're also facing with, you know, facing the, well, that's not how we do it. Or yeah, we've always done it this way. And this is how we've this is how we've always done it. So this is what, how we want to keep always doing it. Um, and do you ever do you, do you ever find it a struggle breaking through that? At the organizational level, that always exists. That's always there. People are you know saying like, hey, you know, we can't really do that. Um, typically, at an individual level, the kind of people that seek my advice and counsel are the ones that are saying like, hey, we've been doing it this way. Something's not working. Why we need help? We need to look at this problem differently. And that's where, you know, I can be, provide a, a secondary perspective um, that says like, hey, let's, you know, we've been looking at the problem like this, let's look at it like this. And perhaps we get a different viewpoint on everything. And, and many times all it is, is a matter of sequencing timing and patience to change things. It's not always the answer, but um, it is one of the easiest things you can do to increase your impact is just evaluate that. I mean, I mean, I've got to think that the great part about this is that it can be relatively low hanging fruit. Changing oh, the yeah. sequence of things, right, doesn't necessarily mean a big capital investment, uh, right? It may just be, no, let's just assign things to different priority and flow. I've, I've, I've got to think some of your clients are, you know, have some pretty big aha moments uh, in relation to that. 
Yeah. I think, um, you know, in, in the, the hardest one to swallow is not always just sequence, it's patience. It's like, you know, and, and it's that scene that you see in like, just about like every more war movie, whether it's, you know, um, Mel Gibson and, you know, Braveheart or some other situation where, you know, they're sitting there saying, hold, hold, you know, wait for it, you know, until the right moment. And, and that's really a hard thing to do because it, it requires a tremendous amount of confidence um, in the people around you, a confidence in the plan, confidence in yourself. And um, sometimes it's helpful to have kind of a cheerleader on the sidelines helping you with that confidence saying, no, you know, keep waiting. It's okay. Now is not the right time. Let's, you know, focus on these other things first. And um, it's also a better utilization of, you know, our scarce resources, time and treasure and capital and stuff like that. It's, you know, that's what we need to manage more efficiently. And sometimes, like you said, it's low hanging fruit. It's not as hard as you think. Well, uh, and, and it occurs to me, I can see where the patients would be hard because a lot of the people you're dealing with are hard chargers, I uh, pay. Entrepreneur, entrepreneurial leaders. Um, many of them might be ready, fire, aim kind of people. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know any of those people, um, ever. And <laughs> so I can see where the patience would be, um, a real, uh, a real challenge. I, I've got a question here that came in from Zelda, uh, Zelda Fogel wrote, can you share any personal insights or experiences that have shaped your perspective on finding clarity in business and its relationship to success? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I, you know, the book is peppered with a bunch of personal stories and, um, you know, there, there are several of them. I think, you know, one of the ones that's, you know, just, we, there's a powerful book at the beginning, a story at the beginning of the book about my father and an illness he had. But I think the one that talks about clarity the most in my mind is, uh, you know, when my son came to me and said like, Hey, I think I want to play lacrosse as a sport. And and I didn't know, you know, what was prompting that. And I was a little bit nervous that it was because um, he wanted to, you know, be like his father because I played some club lacrosse in college. And uh, but no, he was like super crystal clear on what he wanted and why he wanted it. And he was very intentional with his thought process. And it just kind of blew me away because here's, you know, a kid in third grade, um, you know, with clarity that, you know, I don't even see in most adults. And so I, you know, that was really kind of a wake up call for me to say like, wow, you know, I don't even know how often I have that much clarity in the way I think. And, um, it really made me dive deep into, um, just, I was curious about that. I was, I was, he fascinated me. Um, and in many ways, your children often are your greatest teachers as, as mine have been for me and my wife. And, um, you know, that set a, a course of events in motion where we were, um, I started coaching youth sports and that really was an eye opener for me because it got me to learn how to break down complex things that I did instinctually and explain them to, to these little kids that were learning a sport. But while I was doing that, teaching the kids lacrosse, I started doing it at work and breaking down. This is how I sell. And let me explain why I'm successful when I sell or this is why I'm successful when I do projects or I implement, you know, these initiatives. And because I was, you know, taking the same lessons I was learning as a coach and applying them in business. And, and that really was the start of this journey for me, not just writing the book, but as a, as a business advisor and executive coach. So you know, it's interesting um, as you talk about clarity and starting you know, lacrosse in third grade, th third grade. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's crazy how you know things start earlier and earlier and earlier. Um, what a benefit your child will have from that level of clarity at an early age. And of course, right, their you know passions and pursuits will change over time. But but how valuable. Um, but as you were speaking, something came to my mind, and and that's this: many people, as they're writing their books, find that they develop clarity over their message in the mm -hmm. writing process there's something about having to think objectively about your content and to organize it that you the things you thought you knew you, you're you know you things change in that process did you encounter some of that as you were writing clarity 100 100 percent. it was uh such a wonderful process for me and like i said at the onset like i've already gotten the value out of the book for me um, you know, I thought I was a pretty clear thinker. I thought I had some clear thinking and, you know, and if I would present things in a PowerPoint, you know, I, I thought I could organize it well for people to understand. 
you had a conversation, people be like, oh, you sound like you know what you're talking about. But when you put pen to paper, especially in long form, um, things have to tie out. They have to make sense. Uh, and especially if you're weaving in stories, stories that don't seem to go together. I mean, I like our movie that's like, eh, I didn't, it didn't make sense to me. A story has to be good. It has to be clean. And you have to hear that story on a couple different channels. There's like a logical channel of your brain. And then there's this emotional channel of your brain. And when they're in sync, it sounds like good music and stereo, but if they're out of sync, something's just not right. And so, you know, writing a book, especially, you know, with fictional elements, um, it has to be tight. The storyline has to be good. And uh, for me, that forced my thinking to be better, it forced everything about the way I approach all these topics to be cleaner and, you know, more clean, clear cut and uh, tremendous value for me personally. Terrific. Well, um, how do people reach you if they want to get in touch with you or your company for the services that you provide or for speaking or uh, consulting, et cetera? What's the best way for people to reach out to you? Yeah, right now, the best way for people to reach out to me, I'd say, is uh, go to the book website. It's got links to my business and everything else and uh, stuff, but that's at businesswisdom.com. So it's www.businesswisdom.com. All right. Excellent. I can't believe that you got that URL. Um, that's incredible. So, um, well, Jim, thank you so much for coming on today and for all the work that you put into Clarity. And, you know, I, I'll tell you on behalf of our team here at Ignite Press, we hope that the book is a great success for you on many, many levels. Um, but I can tell you, we've really thoroughly enjoyed working with you in the process. Thank you. And likewise, I enjoyed working with the whole team at Ignite. Thank you so much. Well, everybody, if you would, please remember, get out there and go and uh, get your copy of Clarity. Again, 99 cents on Amazon today. Uh, the paperback is also on sale for launch. Um, go grab your copy of that. Um, and if you know others that can benefit from the book, please get some extra copies. I, you know, I know People always joke around about things being a Christmas gift and everything like that. But honestly, this would be a fantastic gift for those people that you know that are working in an organization um, and especially those driving an organization. I think they'll find it. They'll be grateful you got it for them. So and, and if you have a book in mind, please reach out to us. You can schedule a book consultation with us at ignitepress.us. That's ignitepress.us. And you can go there, you can access my calendar and set up a time for us to meet personally. Thank you again for joining us on this livecast. Take care and God bless.